we're looking at lateral wall one stage protocols. And in this module, what I'll be able to share with you is a step-by-step -step protocol, more or less, that we use, that I have used for many, many years. In fact, uh, quite honestly, from 1989 to the present with slight modifications over these years. So let's look at this video that will give us now a very good idea of how this protocol works. Looking at this particular distal extension site, we're missing uh, molars. The game plan is to place uh, two implants and do our lateral wall graft at the same time. And as you're seeing different areas of the alveolar ridge height, the residual bone height, there's a variation from maybe three, four millimeters to maybe six, seven, uh, and that's fine. This uh, incision design will be mid-crestal and sulcular. So we're starting at the base of the tuberosity, more or less and continuing anteriorly there's our distal surface release oblique release incision and then anteriorly we include that papilla again and this will be an oblique surface release anterior all the, all the way to bone this will be a full thickness flap reflection allowing for the buttress of the zygoma to be shown and there's our 15 blade just scoring through periosteum and they're doing this right up front. Why? We are going to be placing implants here. So if that is the case, and or if we were doing a lateral augmentation, as I've shown you in, pre in previous modules, then we have a greater volume, if you will, to close around. In other words, if I just reposition the flap without doing any release, at the very end of this case, assuming I can place these implants, we have those healing abutments in place, right? So that will allow for an increased surface area so therefore not going to work well if we just take the flap and try to close without releasing in other words without passivating the flap to to elongate it and i'd suggest we do that always right up front like now so we're scoring periosteum sharp 15 blade curved hemostat now allowing for good buccinator muscle fiber to be released and then thirdly we can go in with wet gauze and just finger dissect and separate all those fibers. So different ways to, uh, to do that, but it's important that you do it right up front because you're gonna have some bleeding and you don't wanna deal with this at the very end. I like to just close. When I'm ready to close, I wanna close. I don't wanna be playing around with periosteal release. And another reason to go to the distal aspect of the tuberosity, in other words, with that incision design. Why? Because I may wanna harvest some of that bone. And we're gonna save any autogenous bone that we harvest, which is what I'm doing right now from the tuberosity with using the rongeur. And again, just flattening our ridge in pre preparation for the implant osteotomies. And here's the sequence of events. We're using an eight round fissure burr for the window. And nothing's different in terms of dictating the parameters of the overall window. In other words, as I've shown you before, this osteotomy along with these verticals and the superior one are all dictated by where the implants are going to be placed in this case two implants so the extent of this horizontal uh, osteotomy is dictated by the position of those two implants that are going to be placed the vertical legs eight to ten millimeters and then connecting the superior aspect so eight fissure is used to start getting right to the membrane that will be followed now by the piezo device with the OP3. So we're outlining this just till you see the bluish black hue of the uh, sinus membrane itself. And here, actually, I didn't even have to use the OP3 because look at this. The window itself is disarticulated very easily and we're right to membrane. Now, I'm still using the OP3 as a scraper to smooth the margins, uh, the outlined area because the sharp edges could be problematic later for me. So I just want to make everything nice and smooth. I can do that with this OP3, or I can take an eight round fissure burr that we just started with and do the same thing, except we have to protect the underlying membrane. So at this point, we take the EL1 and just undermine circumferentially the entire membrane, which makes things quite nice for us to use our curettes and allowing us to, again, hug bone all the time. That's the goal, is get right against bone and delicately separate the membrane from the bony walls and the bony floor. That's the goal here. 
checking always for perforations, which all that tells me is not a whole lot, to be honest. I'm using a collagen membrane, as I've mentioned to you, ad nauseum in this module and others, that whether we have perfs or not, I'm placing a membrane. We've hydrated it, and we're going to introduce it now to the sinus. The decision to fixate externally versus to not fixate is really dictated by a, a couple different things. Number one would be if we're going to fixate it externally, here are the indications as I see it. We have a medium or a large or a complete tear for whatever reasons, whether we intentionally did it to take pathology out or it just happened inadvertently. Any of those indications as well as if we have a very thin membrane, we elevate and to the best of our knowledge, we don't have a perforation. If that's the case too, or also, then I recommend using the larger membrane with external fixation. There's no concern for graft extravasation then. It's just not gonna happen. And we're going to now use our auto tack from BioHorizons to place the tack. It's spring-loaded, secured. We wanna make sure that that's not moving. If it is, you take it out and start over. Now we go to implant placement. Remember the sequence of events. We outline our window, we elevate our membrane, we create osteotomies like I'm going to show you now. We then can place our graft, say 80-90% volume into the sinus. The next step then would be to place the implants themselves because the graft's already there. We then regraft into and over the window and if we're not doing any lateral ridge augmentation, we're going to place our membrane over that window with fixation and then close. So we started with that, placed our sinus graft, create our osteotomies, place the implants, regrafted, collagen membrane over the window, and of course the healing abutments are in place nicely, and there's our primary closure. And what I've attempted to share with you in this video in particular, and in the module specifically, is that we can definitely very safely, very predictably, perform a lateral wall sinus graft and place implants simultaneously with little to no concern with regard to potential infection if we follow the rules. And the rules are what I've been sharing with you very methodically, very step-by-step -step fashion throughout these modules to indicate to you what goes on in my brain, in my head, when I'm doing these cases. And that's really what the book is all about that I had published, and not just to promote the book, it's just that, that blue ink, if you recall, of every illustration. The illustrations are in black ink, but the blue ink uh, is there for um, thought processes. What goes on? As I'm explaining with each of these uh, modules, step by step, different protocols, different tips, pearls. There's a wealth of knowledge in the book, but again, I'm more or less verbalizing what's in that book with these modules.